Welcome back programmers, Guillaume here. Today we're talking about performance, speed, making your code fast. There is one single rule you need to know about performance. Do not optimize too early. That means first you make your code work, then you make your code fast. Not the other way around, it will not work. So making your code work, well, this whole channel is about uh, pure basic and making code work. But making your code fast, you have some tricks that you can use and today we're going to see one of them, macros. So let's have a look. So macros, very simple yet very powerful feature. Why simple? Because basically macros are just pre-compile time smart code replacement feature. What does this mean? Pre-compile time. Yes, the replacement of the code with macros is done before the compilation, okay? Before the compile time. It's called pre-processor time or processing time. It's before the compile. And it's just code replacement basically, okay? Smart one, but code replacement only with small features here and there, but you'll see it's quite simple, but as I said, very powerful. Why powerful? Well, they allow you to uh, enhance the performance of your code by not calling any procedure. Calling a procedure in the binary code takes a little time in the CPU. Uh, you have to put the variables on the stack, then call the procedures, then etc. It takes a little bit more time than just calling the code itself. So with macros, instead of calling a procedure, the preprocessor will replace the code directly by the code of the macro. And so your code gets a little bit faster. Not that much, but a little bit. So let's have a look at the macros. So the, the limitations and features of the macro. They are placeholders for code. They can have parameters. We call them complex macros or no parameters. Uh, simple macros. A macro can call another macro. It cannot call itself. It is not recursive. The parameters have no type, just a name. So the name in the macro, in the code of the macro, the name of the parameter will be replaced by whatever value you pass when you're calling the macro. And they are not procedures, therefore they do not have lo uh, local variables and they do not return values. They are just replacing code. Okay, let's have a look at simple macros here. Macro with no parameters. Here in this example, I have created a ddebug, okay, for detailed debug, a ddebug macro, which is, which is uh, calling, which is replaced. So whenever you call ddebug in the code, it will be replaced as is by the preprocessor by this text. So this will call the debug feature and I'm using two compile constant, the file and the line. So what I'm gonna see is instead of having just debugging the text or whatever I want to see, I'm going to have the file, colon, the line, the space, and then whatever I've put. So example here, okay. I'm going to run ddbug toto and ddbug tutu plus two. Let's have a look. Here you see, I have my file, colon, the number, the line number, and then space and the text. So toto and tutu two. Um, and you see that ddbug here, the line is different because I'm using the compile pb compile line which gives which returns the actual line so the actual line is really this one because at pre-compile time this ddebug is replaced by this line by this code here it would be exactly the same as doing this that will do exactly the same after the preprocessor is run 
it will be no different than this. If I run this, it will give me the exact result. It's just code replacement. That's for simple uh, macros. Another one, for example, f date to replace the format date. You don't want to write the whole format date keyword. You just write f date, and that do that does the trick. And as I, as I said, a macro can re, can call another one. So I have defined a macro current time s that calls the f date format date with okay year and time of the current the current year time so the current time so here you can see that if i call here i'm calling debug current time s delay of once again and ddebug so the macro above if i run this first i'm writing the current time here and then what I'm doing, I'm writing the current time with the ddebug uh, macro. And you see, line, a file, line, and then the current time. And it's not the same time, 42, 41, because the, the, the code itself is really called at a different time. So simple macros, very easy, but you have even more interesting macros which are complex macros with parameters it's much more interesting to make them look like uh, procedures but actually they're just code replacement so example with the debug again tdebug new macro tdebug t for the time tdebug to display so the parameter here is not typed okay it's the preprocessor is just going to replace this okay by whatever you pass the macro here so it will call debug current time plus whatever you need to display so it will display the current time i'm again using the macro current time s here so uh, here f debug okay f debug for full debug i'm calling d debug so the d debug remember the one with uh, the uh, file and the line plus the time plus the text to display so everything so here i have some examples time debug and full debug let's have a look here so time debug i'm just displaying the time and whatever that needs to be displayed and full debug i have the file the time and the text i need to display and the third line is full debug 3 i also have the file the line the time and the text so that's how you call macros with parameters but just like procedures macros can have default values macro parameters can have default values and same only the last parameters can have a default value you just write it like this super debug i'm calling debug where well, it's basically the same but here if i'm passing if i'm not passing any parameter the text displays will be empty so let's have a look here okay if i pass some text it will display the text here pi equals blah but if i don't pass super debug here if i don't pass any value for the parameter it will be replaced by empty just like a procedure but once again it's not a procedure the preprocessor will replace this directly by ddebug and the ddebug by the actual code of the ddebug so the replacement is step by step until no macros is left to be replaced okay that's for parameters in macros you have a special trick special feature of the macro which is the parameter concatenation with the pound sign so what does this mean it means that whatever 
value you can have in a parameter, it can be concatenated to something else to make a new word in your code. So let's look at this example. I have the macro file requester, title, default, pattern, action. And the action by default is open file. The, okay, the text open file. It's not a string, it's just the word open file. Meaning, if I call and here I have action, you see the action here, action, pound sign, requester. So when the preprocessor is replacing the call to the macro, it will take whatever value is in there and put it here, concat replace right here, action, pound sign, and concatenate it to make the word something requester. So if I pass open file, it will open a open file requester. If I pass save file, it will open a save file requester. If I, if I pass message, it will open a message requester, etc. etc. I can do that because I know that open file requester and save file requester, they have the same parameters. So here are the example. Here I'm calling file requester open any file. Okay, I'm passing open file. Second example, I'm passing nothing for the action, meaning it's going to use the default value of the parameter, which is open file again. And finally, I can call it with save file. It should open a save file requester because this save file will be replaced here. If I were to replace the three lines here by the actual code that is generated, we would have something like this. I can just, I can just, you know what? I can just do this. This. And this. And with zero here. Okay, so the preprocessor is basically going to replace these three lines by the three lines. See how it concatenates open file with requester to give open file requester. So the pound sign lets you create new word in your macro like this. So control B, let's run it. Run it. First, open any file. Star dot star. It's an open file requester, open here. Second, another open file requester, open JPEG image, star.jpg. And the third one, it's a save file. It's a save file requester. The button is save here. And it's star.pb for the file pattern. So one code file requester for opening either a open file requester or save file requester. That's one example. Uh, for uh, concatenating parameter with the pound sign in macros. Another thing that you can use in macros is the macro expanded count. What is this? It is replaced, so not at compile time, once again, at pre-compile time by the preprocessor. It is replaced by the number of times the macro has been expanded, called, called or expanded, it's the same. The number of time the actual, the macro has been replaced, okay, in your code. Example, so you can use this trick, for example, if your macro is defining variables, you can use this trick to define a new variable for each call, each time the macro is called, it's going to define, it's going to define a new variable example here so first let me example here macro deck var i'm defining count dot i i do count plus one and i debug the count this is the example that does not work why if i call deck var macro twice 
the count will be defined twice but the second time it's defined it's basically going to do nothing and so the count is going to be incremented twice so we are going to have one count equals one and the second call is going to debug count equals two let's try count equals one count equals two that's the same variable and maybe you don't want to have the same variable because you don't want to share variables between between macros to do that you need to declare a different variable for each call and of course you know you've guessed already you can use this macro expanded count and here i'm using it in conjunction with the spawn sign so i have my new macro here deck var extended i'm defining a new variable count but the word count i'm concatenating to the macro expanded count so the first time is going to be replaced by one so it's going to be count one and the second time is going to be replaced by two count two so i'm going i'm going to define two variables count one and count two and of course i need to use this uh, construction here count pound sign macro expanding count every time i need to use the variable in my macro let's test deg var x i'm calling it twice count one equals one count two equals one we are not using the same variables we have a different variable for each call to the macro it is very interesting and finally easy okay undefined macro so you can define a macro but you can undefine a macro if you the good example would be if you want to use a macro just in a specific piece of code you want to undefine it right after that's first or if you want to redefine a macro with something else which is a little bit strange but you can do that so the undefined macro will undefine a macro as simple as that if you want to call the macro after the undefined it will not work okay here if i were to use degvar and i'm undefining and sorry i'm undefining the degvar macro but i'm using it right there if i run that i have a syntax error because the degvar keyword the degvar word is not is not known by the compiler and by the pre pre compiler so you cannot do that what you can do is redefine so if i don't same same thing if i try to redefine a macro which is already defined it tells me that it's already defined so not good because it's tr it tries to replace degvar by the degvar macro already defined and it says macro macro and and, and then it doesn't work it's, uh, compile error so here now I can undefine the previous degvar macro and replace it with a new one, new degvar. And so after that, I can call the new degvar macro f5, new degvar, the new macro works. And that's it for macros. And voila, you know everything you need to know about macros. Simple, right? You can now speed up your code, but remember the only rule, do not optimize too early. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you have any question, drop a comment in the comment section. And of course, you can subscribe right here. Check out the social media right there and the latest video right here. That being said, thank you all for watching. I will see you soon.